My name is John Apolito, and I'm one of a dozen curators, archivists, scholars, and librarians at the University of Maine's Digital Curation grad program. I'm going to take a few minutes to give you a quick overview of our graduate certificate, as well as give you an introduction to our first course, Introduction to Digital Curation, or DIG 500. Let's start with a quick overview of the certificate. The Digital Curation Certificate prepares you to manage the bits that we swim in, the digital assets being created around us all the time. Sometimes we're conscious of these bits, as when we send an email, snap a digital photograph, or scan a paper document to create a digital file. We unconsciously leave a wake of digital records around us as we go about our day. Location and camera information stored in our photographs, GPS signatures captured by our mobile phones every few minutes, cookies deposited on our hard drive as we browse from website to website. Traditionally, curating was confined to galleries and museums, but a new breed of curator has emerged to make sense of this immense swarm of digital information that now swirls around us. Some of these new curators ply blogs and social networks. Others wield newfangled tools like Delicious, Tumblr, Pinterest, Scoopit. At the same time, many folks who work with traditional collections are realizing they need digital curation skills too. Maybe you're an archivist who needs to digitize audio cassettes or videotapes or a librarian trying to figure out how to collect CDs or categorize websites, or a photographer who wants to put all your photographs on the web. Even brick and mortar museum staff are expanding their digital skills as curators, conservators, and registrars retrain to confront the challenges of virtual exhibitions and ephemeral technologies. Our program trains digital curators to tackle these challenges in four distinct phases. DIG 500 focuses on acquisition, the process of collecting digitized or born digital works. DIG 510 explores representation, the application of metadata to make your digital stuff easier to find. DIG 540 helps you achieve access, tracking your files in a database and putting them on the web for everyone to see. And DIG 550 tackles preservation the long-term care of digital artifacts in the face of impending technical obsolescence. Apart from these four phases of the digital curation workflow, two additional courses round out the curriculum, an elective of your choosing and an internship that can take place in your own workplace or in one we recommend for you. Our introductory course is taught by special collections librarian Richard Hollinger, art historian Justin Wolf, and myself, John Apolito, a new media professor and former Guggenheim curator. The course focuses on acquisition, how you get digital stuff into a collection, but it also offers an overview of the other three phases in the rest of the curation workflow. You'll learn things like how to digitize analog artifacts, legal constraints on sharing files, how to apply basic metadata, how to build a tag cloud, the trade-off between authorities and folksonomies, how to draw a database schema, the four basic preservation strategies, and much more. While there are no course prerequisites for DIG 500, to take this online course, you'll need a broadband connection, like DSL or cable. Satellite works for most content, but tends to choke on streaming media. For maximum compatibility, we we'll are ask you to download the free Firefox browser and QuickTime Media Player. The lessons themselves will be delivered via online readings and videos. You'll turn in assignments and participate in discussions using online courseware. And if you sign up, we'll email you more info about that. In the meantime, please click on the link to the syllabus in the course welcome page to learn more and email me if you have any questions. Most of what you might be interested in can be found at digitalcuration.umaine.edu. And if you get in trouble technically, there's lots of people who are ready to support you at the Department of Continuing and Distance Education, or CED. You'll find ways to get to them on the numbers on your screen. Thanks and welcome to the class.